Welcome, brothers and sisters. Let's come here all together and worship our Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, today's call for worship verses are coming from Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 6 and verse 8. For you are a people holy to the Lord your God. The Lord your God has chosen you to be the people for his treasured possession out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. But it is because the Lord loves you and is keeping the oath that he swore to your fathers, that the Lord has brought you out of the mighty hand and redeemed you from the house of slavery, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. This is what uh, Moses said to his people in the desert. God has redeemed them from Egypt and uh, saved them from the slavery. And God also gave them new identities and called them different names. And same for us, we are also redeemed from God from our sins. And God called us new names as well and gave us new identity. We are called uh, God's own possession, kingdom priest, holy nation, redeemed by God, chosen by God. We are loved by God and treasured by God. Yet oftentimes we fall short of this glory. And have taken these uh, uh, new identities and new callings for granted. We worship other idols, just like the Israelites in the desert. So that brings us to the confession of sin, the verses also in Deuteronomy chapter 6, 13 to 15. It is the Lord your God you shall fear. Him you shall serve, and by his name you shall swear. You shall not go after other gods, the gods of the people who are around you. For the Lord your God is your midst, is a jealous God, lest the anger of the Lord your God be kindled against you, and he destroy you from off the face of the earth. <clears throat> Let's have a uh, time of silent moment and uh, just pondering this word and confessions. Dear God, we thank you that you redeemed us from our sins. You call us new names and give us new identity. However, we didn't uh, live holy as you as as uh, as you want us to do. Con we confess our sins and ask for your forgiveness. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. The assurance uh, of salvation is also coming from Deuteronomy chapter 14, verse 2. For you are the people holy to the Lord your God, and the Lord has chosen you to be the people for his treasure and possession, 
out of all the peoples who are on the face of the earth. <coughs> Let's use our uh, songs to give worship to our God. Jesus, we have assurance of our salvation. Because of this, we praise him all day today and every day. And because he saved us, we will teach others about Jesus. And we also commit our lives to serving him. We'll have the song lyrics in Chinese and English, and you can sing in whichever language you're most comfortable. Please stand. Jesus is mine, oh what a foretaste of glory divine, here of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story, this is my song. Praise my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song. Praise my Savior all the day long. One church of fools who cry the wood, ten times the Lord.
In Christ alone my hope is found. He is my mind, my strength, my soul. This cornerstone, this solid ground, firm to the fiercest drought and storm. What heights of love, what depths of peace, when fields are still, when striving cease. My comforter, my all in all, here in the love of Christ I stand.
also the uh, time to collect the tithe and offering. And uh, uh, the first, first Sunday of the month, we also have two, uh, two collections. The second one is for mission only.
Good morning. Um, uh, and you know, we have a, a number of new younger families, so let me explain something. Um, there's something that we call Promotion Sunday. And Promotion Sunday is this first Sunday of September, and that's when kids are promoted up a grade, and I know it's sort of new to say rising when you graduate or move up. So as the young children are dismissed, kind of keep that in mind, um, and I think the teachers are gonna be out um, looking for the kids. Uh, so if you go out through the gym, that'll help. As um, Yu Chung mentioned, uh, this morning we're going to talk about the fact that God has given us a new identity. Um, and, and this is pretty crucial for us. Um, and the simple truth is God called the people of Israel to himself and gave them an identity at Mount Sinai. And then we are the same. We get the same identity. We're the same people. Um, um, and this morning, as we begin, and we're going to look at Exodus 19, something that God says to tell Israel, tells Moses to tell Israel right before they make the covenant. He says several things. Um, one, I brought you to myself, so this is a relationship. But two, there's something I'd like to highlight this morning and that we are treasured. Um, and, and I had to talk with Pastor Jin Kai about this because there is a Hebrew word um, that is translated as my people. What does it mean? Um, and it's probably the only place in the Chinese Union version where I've ever thought this is not a real literal translation. It is actually an incredible translation. Um, but the truth is, sometimes in the English translations, it comes out as treasured people just a few times. Uh, but this morning, this is the word that we want to focus in on, and that is we sometimes lose sight or forget how valuable and how treasured we are in God's sight. Um, and the simple truth is we have people around us who are not Christian, who sometimes struggle with their sense of value, even if they're really successful, internally they may not feel so good about themselves. And so as we have a new identity as God, God's treasured people, or we are his treasure, we share the gospel with them. We engage in evangelism. And part of what we do is we tell them, if you follow Christ and give your life to him and accept him as your Lord and Savior, you too can be a treasured person in God's sight. So we have a new identity and a new mission. Um, and there's just this couple of verses, but what we're going to find out is that Moses repeats it several times. He says it a little differently, 
when he goes through the books of Deuteronomy, but Paul and Peter actually repeat it and say the same thing to us as Christians. Uh, the same people. Okay, so what he says is he brings them to Mount Sinai, and you remember that. There's been the ten plagues, and then the Passover lamb, and the exodus, and crossing the Red Sea, and then they finally get to Mount Sinai. And then he tells you and I, that this applies to you and I, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians. And then he has this beautiful image. He says, I bore you out, I carried you on wings of an eagle or on eagle's wings, and I brought you, and notice this, to myself. Now, therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you, Neiman, yeah, you, yeah, we, 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 yeah, you all, um, you're going to be my treasured possession. This is what God tells us. And this word treasured possession, it sometimes means wealth, it means valuable, it means a, a treasure, it also means like jewels. We're valuable in God's eyes. You'll be my treasured possession among all the peoples of the whole world. For all the earth is mine. But I chose you. You are my treasured people. And you have a mission. Your identity is your mission. You're a kingdom of priests. Or as Peter says, a royal priesthood. We have a, a job to do to tell the world about who God is. That's what it means to be a priest here. And you're a holy people. You're a holy nation. Uh, let us bow our heads for a moment and pray and ask God to help us to value the identity that he has given us. God Almighty in heaven, you are awesome. You created the whole entire world. And following Adam and Eve, we have rebelled against you. We've not only fallen short of your glory, but we have rebelled. We have disobeyed you. We've treated you badly. We've been more and more concerned about other things than concerned about you. And yet, God, you love us. And we do pray that this morning that you will open our hearts and help us to see how important these words are to you. I pray that as I speak, you will help us to be amazed at what it is that you have done with us and the new identity that we have. And, I, and we all pray that you will use this new identity to motivate us to be zealous about evangelism and good works. Help us to understand, God, that 
Evangelism needs good works to show itself. And that good works without evangelism is empty. Open our hearts in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Um, uh, my father-in-law is English. Um, born, raised, grew up in England. English citizenship. And my mother-in-law is Dutch. Dutch citizenship. England has a royalty, king, queen. Holland has a queen. Um, I'm American. I'm American. I don't care anything about royalty. Not at all. Not at all. But what is their national treasure because of my father-in-law, I need to see as oh, that's really important, because that's important to him. Now, I looked up the largest diamonds in the world, and one of them is the Culligan di diamond. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, it's not Culligan. I've watched too many commercials. It's Cullinan. Uh, there's a series of them, the largest diamonds, among the largest diamonds in the world. And these are now what is called the British Crown Jewels. You know, and it's on the, the crown, but it's on the staff, that what thing we call a scepter. Um, and it's in the British, I, th I think it's in the Tower of London. You can go see it. Um, but it says it's a jewel. It's a treasure. The Hebrew word for us being God's own possession means jewel and treasure. So, in fact, we are God's treasured jewels. God wants us to gather an idea and to sink deep into our heart how valuable we are to him. It's a motivation for obedience and godly living, and it's a motivation for evangelism and motivation for good works. Okay, so you have no connection to England. But you've all had Chinese New Year. Have you not? There's a lot of things at Chinese New Year. One of them is Yuan Bao. Am I not right? You know, and you get the, like, the, sometimes there's like, the, you get the, even these little, I don't, I, Cardboard yuan baos. And pictures of it everywhere. You know, what is yuan bao? In, England, in English, we call it a gold ingot. And, and it's a treasure. It's a gold treasure. And in the ancient world, this is how wealth you know, was kind of held, and how you could show how wealthy you were. You know, in the ancient world, I realize they're not as big as some of the things that you see, you know, in China during the Chinese New Year. But this is Yuan Bao, it's a treasure. And then I'm trying to figure out, Pastor Jinkai, okay, well, what kind of word can we use since the, the Chinese Bible actually doesn't translate the word treasure like the English Bible does? Um, 
So he says, um, Bao Gui. Uh, and of course, I think Yuan Bao de Bao. You know, this is a treasure. This is a jewel. Something incredibly valuable. This is what we are. And this is what all of us are. This is what God says to you, and this is what God says to me. And God is offering this identity to the people around us if we share the gospel. So when they get to Mount Sinai, God says some things to Moses. Go down there and talk to the people. And then he says, I bore you out, I flew you, I carried you, and I brought you. And, and you'd think, well, what is he about ready to say? I carried you and I brought you where? Of course, I, I brought you to Mount Sinai. I brought you to Mount Sinai so we can have this contract, if you will. We can have this covenant. But he doesn't say that. Before the covenant comes the relationship. Notice God's priority. I brought you to myself. He doesn't say, I carried you to Mount Sinai so we can have a covenant. No, he says, I brought you to myself so we can have a relationship. So, if you listen to my voice and you keep my commandments, you know, you know once you engage in that contract, that covenant, once you become the bride of Yahweh, you know, and the uh, the bride of Christ is nothing more than the bride of Yahweh carried into the New Testament. What does he tell us? You are my treasured possession. Now, your Bibles might say you are my own people. It may say in English, you are my possession that I chose you out of all of the other peoples of the world. But that Hebrew word, your jewel, your treasure, your valuable, your prize, that's the first thing he says. Do you feel like you're treasured before God? You know, how do you know? We got to listen and obey, but we also have to have to accept what he says about us. And since I brought you to myself, you are going to be to me a kingdom of priests. You're going to tell the world about who I am. And you're a holy nation. You're a holy people. You're set aside for God, but you're set aside also for holy living. Now, let me ask you a question. Remember when you were little kids and your mom kept saying the same thing over and over and over again? And then remember your dad, he would come home and your mom would tell you, him what you had done and he would say the same thing over and over and over again? You know, and then you kind of get bored of them saying the same thing over and over and over again? You know, it's almost like you turn the volume down. But why do they say the same thing over and over and over again? You see, we got to listen to God because we can either have two reactions. One, we can say, oh, we're bored with God saying the same thing over and over and over again. Or we can stand in awe and see that if God says it over and over and over again, it's really important. Mm -hmm. 
So these very words here are repeated over and over and over again. Moses, in the book of Deuteronomy, he says it over and over and over again, and then he adds a little bit here and a little bit there. He says it here, and then he adds something. Then he says it again, and then he adds something. Why? Because I think Moses stands in awe that this is who we are. And God, as the author of the Bible, he thinks it's crucial and important. So let's go through a few of these. You know, what when, when I'm asking, don't be one of those people that turns, turns this off and thinks, oh, this is boring. It's like listening to my mom and dad saying the same thing. Instead, be like Moses, I think, standing in awe. Wow. So Deuteronomy 5 gives the law. Deuteronomy 6, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and then raise up children that follow me. Deuteronomy 7, let's talk about how you should live. Let's kind of remember what I did for you. He says the same thing. Notice this. You are a holy people to the Lord your God. You're holy. You're set aside for God. You belong to him. But also called to obedience and a holy life. It's to the Lord your God. By the way, do you know what the word Elijah means? Yeah, Elijah. Eli, yeah. Yah, Yahweh. El, God. Eli, or Eli, my God. Elijah means my God. His mom kept looking at what this was written and said, the Lord your God, and thought, this is really super important. I'm going to name my child that. Notice he adds a few things. The Lord chose you. The Lord elected you. This is the doctrine of election. He chose you to be his treasured possession. Again, he repeats that. And the Lord loved you. See, he's adding a few things. The Lord chose you. The Lord loved you. Are you bored with this? No, or are you like Moses or like me? I just, I think, wow, you know, I look at my own sin and how depraved I am, and I think, why would God choose me, and why would God love me? And I certainly... I'm not worthy of being a treasure or a jewel or valuable to God. I know myself. <laughs> and because he chose you and because he loved you, he redeemed you from the house of slavery. How did he redeem us? What is redemption? The Passover lamb. The blood of the Passover lamb was a symbol of what God would do with Jesus on the cross. Redeeming us or redeeming them from slavery in Egypt is only an antitype or, or what, we, what we call maybe a prefiguration of God redeeming us from our own sin, from the influence of Satan, and from death. He's redeemed us. (laughs) 
The Passover lamb points forward to the precious blood of Christ. That's how Peter puts it. So we are rescued for God to belong to him. We are also redeemed for God to belong to him as his precious jewel. And we are chosen to be his children. So you get to Deuteronomy 14. Notice, at the beginning of some of his speeches, Paul, or not Paul, Moses, he comes and he says the same thing over and again, but he adds a few things. Motivation. You are children of the Lord your God, therefore you should say, Elijah, Yahweh is my God. Don't worship other gods. Notice he says the same thing. You're a holy people to the Lord your God, The Lord chose you, and you are a people of his treasured possession. You are God's national treasure, the crown jewels. So when the New Testament says that we're children of God, it's nothing more than a continuation of what God said to Pharaoh Israel is my son, my firstborn son, let my son go. God redeemed us for his people with the blood of Christ. And we're his treasured people. But treasured children. We've already seen that we've been chosen by God, We've seen that we are loved by God. We've seen that we have been made God's children, but we're consecrated by God and we're treasured as his holy people, but also as his treasured children. Deuteronomy 26. The Lord declared, Imagine what that means. When the God of the universe says, this is who you are, this is blessed assurance. This is telling us who we are, and we need to trust God what he says. God declared you to be his people his treasured possession. God consecrated you and he set you aside for his purpose to the Lord your God. That's why we live. We have a new identity and we have a new mission. Our new identity is manifold. There's many things and our new mission is evangelism, to be zealous for evangelism and to be zealous for good works. Let's add these things up. Let's kind of go through those four passages. You know, he repeats the same thing. Adds a few things. The list slowly gets a little bit longer. Let's look at the list as a whole. And then we have an option. We could read this list repeated over and over again and think this is boring, just like you would think when my mom tells me something over and over again, I'm getting bored, I don't want to listen to her. Or we could stand amazed and in awe that God has made us who are so unworthy these things. We could stand and read this list and think, wow, if God says this about me, 
and he repeats it. It must be important to him, so it needs to be important to me. Which is it going to be? He says we're his treasured people. Um, by the way, if your translation doesn't set that, come talk with Pastor Jinkai and I, and we will show you the Hebrew. Yes. Bow Guida. I like that. We're a kingdom of priests. We're a holy nation. We are redeemed for God, and we are God's chosen people. Wow, doesn't God know how deeply sinful I am? How can I be this? This is amazing. And then he says, you're the children of God. And not only are you a child of God, you are a child that is loved by God, and you're a child that is treasured by God. Remember when I said the bride of Christ is like the bride of Yahweh? And you remember in Ephesians 5 when it talks about the relationship between a husband and a wife? It says, husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church, and he gave himself for her? And then there's this little tiny verse. Be like God with your wife. Um, do you know what it says there, right? Remember, the bride of Yahweh becomes the bride of Christ. There's a continuity there. And then he says we're to reflect it. And then he says that a husband is to look at his wife. He is to cherish her like a precious jewel. We all fall short. So for the rest of all the husbands here, I apologize to the wives. But we're precious. We're bao guida. Yuan bao de bao. I want to tell you about a little child. Most of you know him. You guys remember him? Uh, Yuan Bao? Uh, you know, and his name was Shen, Shen Yuan Bao. Uh, because that's, Shen was the name of the name that they gave to all the children at the Shenyang Orphanage. But he comes to us with the name Yuan Bao. Uh, he came to us on a Thursday night. Down syndrome. The doctors that brought him said he had it maybe three, four days before he died. Malnutrition. Pneumonia. Belly that stuck out like this. No muscle, no fat on his arms or on his legs. A stick, big, big, big lump here, a stick, stick, lump, stick. He was almost dead. Um, and Sandy, day by day, takes an eyedropper and feeds him. Then he's loved by a whole group of Christians. You know, first he stays with us. Notice how he's 
fat now? Yeah, we, yes. Taipangla. With Yuan Bao, that was a good thing. With, with me, it's not a good thing. Taipangla. But when he is Pangla, that's good. And then, you know, after we move, we come back and we found a family for him while he stayed. You know, we sent $600 a month. We sent back to China to pay uh, our IE, our Baumu, to take care of him. He's a treasured child. Tasha, Baguita hides us. And then at one point, you know, the IE sends us a picture and he's got these little headphones on. You know, and he, he doesn't have like a little micro, microphone like I do. He's got a better microphone. I was thinking about this. So I, I, I kind of reposted that picture. So Yuan Bao means ingot. He's treasured. His American name means Yahweh is my God. When you see him, he talks about Jesus all the time. Talks about God. He loves Jesus. Down syndrome. Hard time talking. But I've seen videos of him singing, Jesus is God, Jesus is God, Jesus is God. A little child got out of bed and breakfast, and he goes up and he loves helping people. So he lo loves to do good works. He's kind, he's gracious, he's happy all the time. although probably grumpy once in a while. But he talks about Jesus. He probably has a better relationship with God than I do. And don't forget, when we get to the new heavens and the new earth, perfect mind, perfect body, and a perfect walk with the Lord. So a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about Yuan Bao and treasure and this message, and I kind of like thought, what? The, this old picture of that his IE sent us? Headphones? Microphones so he can tell people about Jesus? And his mother pops up with another picture exactly like that. Yeah, he flew, he was born on wings of an eagle. Well, not an eagle. This is a picture from his first helicopter trip. See, we're, we are exactly like Yuan Bao. Essentially dead in our trespasses and sins. Unworthy of love. We don't have pneumonia, but we have an illness called sin. And God takes us and he brings us out and he nurtures us. He gives us life. Not just forgiveness, he gives us life. He gives us this whole new identity. And what Jesus Christ is asking us is, if you understand the identity I have given you, I want you to be just like you. I want you to tell people about Jesus, and I want you to be kind and helpful and do good works. He 
He's a perfect model of a disciple in Jesus. Can't read, but got a great relationship with Jesus. So, what does God want from us? See, if you don't know how the Bible fits together and you cut the Bible in half, you don't realize that there's a connection between the Old Testament and the New Testament. It's a false division. There's a unity. A unity. What God said to them at Mount Sinai, God says to us. And he tells us, you have the same exact identity, and what I want from you is to be zealous for evangelism and zealous for good works. Peter quotes this exactly. The, the, the Greek word for possession doesn't mean treasure or jewel or valuable. It just means possession. But the same exact words. You are the same people. There's no difference. No difference. You've just been grafted in, that's all. You're... You are the chosen race. You are a royal priesthood. You know, Moses said kingdom of priest and royal priesthood, but it's the same thing. We have a job to tell the world about God and about Christ and about the gospel. We're the same holy nation. And we are the people of God's possession. Doesn't mean much if you divide the Old Testament from the New Testament, but if you see the unity, you realize that you're treasured. Uh, this particular verse, many years ago, completely changed my theology. And what is it that God wants from us? To talk about our exodus. To talk about our Passover lamb. Christ, our Passover lamb, has been sacrificed. God has rescued us from the domain of darkness, as Paul says, and transferred us into the kingdom of his beloved son, the promised land. Peter says the same thing, uses different words. You are not redeemed with perishable things like silver, gold, and I would add diamonds, but you were redeemed isn't that what Moses said repeatedly? You were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ. And then a few verses later, he says, then, because of that, and because you are a chosen race, royal priesthood, holy nation, people of God's own possession, I want you to proclaim the excellencies of God. He called you out of darkness, Egypt, sin, Satan, death, and he brought you into light, his light, his marvelous light, the light of his beloved son. Peter's telling us that we need to tell people about Jesus. You tell people about Jesus, you tell people about his death on the cross, you tell people about his resurrection. 
and you tell people about how he rescued you from sin. You know, your darkness, your sin, is probably different than my darkness and my sin. Sometimes it's like some really big sin. Sometimes it's something small. Pride. Arrogance. Perhaps self-centeredness. You know, we all have different sin. But in some ways we have to tell people about it. And then not only do we tell people about Jesus, his death on the cross, his shed blood, his resurrection, and how he has changed us, we also need to do that with good works. Paul and Titus. He said, look, when you... um, when you're down there with your churches, remind them. Look at these words, aren't they familiar? Remind them that God our Savior, I should have included that, God our Savior, Jesus Christ, he calls Jesus God. Jesus Christ, God our Savior, he has given himself He gave himself, but notice this, he redeemed us. That's the same thing Moses said. Why? To purify for himself, notice this. Does this look familiar? I hope you're not bored with the repetition. The repetition means God thinks this is important. Christ, our Passover lamb, gave himself so that we would be a people for his own possession. And what does he want from us? For Moses, that identity was a motivation for holy living. For Peter and Paul, the motivation is for evangelism, and it's supposed to be a motivating factor for doing good works. Evangelism without good works is often empty or ineffective. Good works without the gospel is empty. Um, When can we do good works? You know, a lot of times it's what we do for friends and people in need. But you remember what the Bible says about doing good works. Widow, orphan, poor, and alien. That's his focus. That's God's focus. So we have to find ways as a church to actually live this out. Um, I suggest there's two ways. Uh, We have heard from Grace Lai about her involvement with Restore St. Louis and, I'm sorry, and health connections. That is a lot of times helping poor widows or poor widowers or just poor people. And then Restore St. Louis has a work day. We've got a day lined up for that. Um, A second is feed my starving children. People gather together downtown and make food packets to send 
to starving people or people whose lives are ruined by natural disasters or famine. And whether it's New City Fellowship or Feed My Starving Children, both of them do evangelism. Our good works by helping them helps them to share the gospel. So again, go back and read these passages and stand in awe and amazement that you are God's treasure. That, that you are his chosen, loved, and treasured children. And as a kingdom of priests, reach out and be zealous for evangelism and zealous for good works. Let's pray. Um, God Almighty, um, we are so unworthy of what you have called us to. We're so unworthy of the precious blood of Christ. Um, and yet we stand in amazement and awe that you, God, would grant that to us. So we ask you, Jesus Christ, to move us and to motivate us in sharing the gospel with the people around us, inviting them to church, telling them the gospel and helping them to understand how to read the Bible, and help us to do good works, whether it be helping other organizations or helping needy people that are our neighbors. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Amen. How deep, how deep is the Father's love for us? That he gave his only son to make a wretch his treasure. To make us his treasure. As we sing the song of response, please meditate on God's love for us and how we respond to that. Please stand.
成全完美的终点。Team、uh, lead us、uh, thinking about how precious and God treat us. So we were God's treasured possession. We are His holy children, holy people. And、uh, in New Testament, and we were reminded this. Make it even clear because we were purchased by、uh, Jesus Christ with His precious blood shed from the cross. And、uh, we, as sinners, we supposed to, to to die, but we were redeemed by Jesus Christ by His life. So in New Testament, we have another name, another identity. We are Christians. That means that we are like Christ. We are the disciples of Christ. How people know Christ? They they know Christ through our life, through our living. Through our sharing, through our the good work and the the light we shine on the、uh, on people, and that, that light is from Jesus Christ, the true light of the world. So on the first Sunday of each month, we have a communion time. That remind us how we are united with Christ. Whether we call it English called communion or Lord's table, in Chinese translation, it always says 圣餐 Because anything related to God is holy. Even we have another name. We are holy saints. We are 圣徒 So when you walk into the sanctuary, if you are Christian, you have not taken an element. And please raise your hand, and、uh, the ushers will give you、uh, the cup and the bread.
The Holy Communion is initiated by our Lord Jesus Christ. He invited us to come to his table. Think about this. If you receive an invitation from a mayor, from a governor, uh, invite you for dinner, how would you think? How incredible. I'm not worthy. How can I receive a, such an invitation from the higher people? But the Holy Communion, participating in the Lord's table, is the invitation from our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, Lord of Lords. So let's take this time and have a moment of silent prayer. Think about how blessed we are, how Jesus Christ loved us, how God loved us so much that Jesus Christ died on the cross for our sins. Dear Lord Jesus, thank you for your love, your sacrifice. You rescued us from the domain of the sin world. You redeemed us with your own life. By the Holy Spirit of adoption as sons, in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, we can say to God, Abba, Father. All of those because the wonderful salvation done by Jesus Christ on the cross. Lord, as we come to your table, help us to remember your love, your sacrifice. You died for us and uh, help us to live for you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Brothers and sisters, let's open the, the part, the end of the, of the bread. This bread is a symbol of Jesus Christ. His body broken us, broken for us. Let's partake together. Let's open the other end of the cup. That's the symbol of Jesus Christ. His blood shed from the cross and his blood covered our sins, wiped out our sins. That's all right. Let's partake together, then Pastor Paul will give a benediction. Let's partake. Let's bow our heads for the benediction. May all of us live out what James, the brother of Jesus, taught us. True religion before God the Father is to visit the orphans and widows in their affliction. and to keep oneself unstained in the world.
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It's so time for announcement and welcome. There's a tradition, if you are the first time visitor here, or the second time, or uh, was never properly introduced, I'd uh, like to know you, and uh, please stand up and the uh, ushers will bring the microphone to you. <clears throat> um, on my left, uh, right hand side, anybody uh, first time visit? on my left hand side. Yeah, okay. Can you please stand up in uh,那个来到圣路易市不久,第一次来。啊,那对我会你,啊,刚从那个克罗拉多来到圣路易市,没多久,很高兴第一次来参加我们教会的教会。谢谢。Welcome. <laughs> Anybody else? All right, just a, uh, just a couple of uh, quick announcements. Uh, it's, it's all on the bulletin, but I know a lot of people don't take bulletin anymore. Uh, one is the uh, tomorrow, the Labor Day, there will be a picnic uh, supported by the church at 11 o'clock. AM tomorrow morning. <clears throat> yeah, that will be in the, uh, the Schrader's Park, uh, just uh, less than a mile away from here. Uh, the church will, br uh, will bring uh, the main dishes, like hamburgers or hot dogs, etc. but everybody's welcome to bring their own dish to share. <clears throat> And the, uh, the children's uh, classrooms are also looking for some uh, toy donations. If you have uh, grown up children and have a lot of uh, toys that are not used, please bring to, uh, to one of the classrooms uh, next to the nursery before the end of this month. And after this hour, uh, adults also have, uh, also have uh, Sunday schools at different classrooms. Please attend one of them. Okay, this is uh, all for today's service, and thank you very much uh, for joining, and uh, let's have a time of moment and meditation before we dismiss. <clears throat>